Yeah, Richard Miles, thank you for joining us and congratulations uh, on, well, holding your seat and uh, now to become Deputy PM. Well, thanks, David. It's um, been an extraordinary 24 hours and um, it, it sounds very remarkable to me when you, when you describe it like that. But uh, it, it is a historic uh, moment and I think Anthony Albanese's achievement really over the last three years, which has been as difficult a period in which I can remember to lead Labor, both after the, the grief, really, of the 2019 result, but then clearly leading us through uh, the pandemic when the, the, the place of oppositions is not very significant. People are focusing on the government of the day. They look to it for authoritative information. Um, and when you cast back to the middle of 2020 and, and think that we are now in a position where Anthony Albanese has just won this election, it says everything about his leadership, about the way in which he has positioned the party, um, and it is um, a remarkable result and an incredible credit to him. A few nuts and bolts, uh, things that need to get done pretty quickly. Um, firstly, if Labor doesn't get to a majority of 76 seats, Anthony Albanese has said repeatedly, no deals. So does that mean you would be relying on this very large crossbench day to day for support on legislation or even confidence motions? Well, firstly, let's see how it all plays out. I think there is a bit of counting to go and we are uh, hopeful that we can achieve a majority in our own right. Um, the, the point that we've made all through the campaign is that what we are taking to the Australian people is what we will take to the parliament. So there's not going to be any deals in forming government. I'd also make the point, though, that whatever happens in the House of Representatives, we absolutely know that there will be a crossbench in the Senate, as there has been throughout my political life. Uh, and working with crossbenches is, is always needed to be done in order to get legislation through. Now, we're really confident that the agenda that we've laid out, we can get through the parliament. But Anthony is a person who is enormously skilled at bringing people together. Um, he, you know, we're not going to do the kind of divisive uh, legislation that we've seen from Scott Morrison over the last decade, which has been aimed at wedging his opponent but dividing the country. Anthony wants to bring the country together again, and that will be reflected in the way in which uh, we approach the parliament, and, and we're confident that we can get the agenda through the parliament. As deputy leader, you can choose your portfolio. So. What will it be? <laughs> well, I think I'd be getting off on the wrong foot um, with, with my leader if I was about to preempt what is obviously uh, his announcement. Um, and so I'll, I'll leave that to him uh, in due course, David. Is he announcing that today? Uh, look, again, um, what he has made clear is that with um, his intention to uh, go to the meeting of the Quad, which I think is a really important statement as well about the priority that we see in Australia being regarded as a, as a thoughtful, purposeful country on the international stage. That's why Anthony was very keen to be attending this very important meeting right now, given uh, the complexity of Australia's strategic circumstances. Um, but the transition arrangements will be obviously worked through. We, we've been uh, in an orderly way. Well, presumably Anthony you've had a more presumably say about a that conversation with him already about what role you're going to have as deputy leader. Yeah, uh, yeah I have, but um, I'm not about to reveal no, okay. it now. But when um, you get sworn and, in and tomorrow, that is, and that is a matter. For no, him. I understand that you want him to announce it. But tomorrow morning, when you get sworn in, can you just clarify for us? Will you be sworn into your new portfolio, or just into the executive? Yeah, look, again, I feel that I, there, I know the answer to that question, but I, I think it's okay. the right thing for Anthony to, to, to make that announcement uh, during the course of the day. Let me just try uh, one slightly different approach on this. Will you be on the plane <laughs> to Tokyo to join uh, the, um, the new Prime Minister at the Quad meeting? Uh, no. You'll be staying at home? Indeed. OK, a couple of other things. Christina Keneally uh, failed to win uh, in, in her attempt in Fowler in Western Sydney. Was it a mistake denying branch members a chance to choose the candidate there? Oh, look, uh, I, I, again, I think it's easy to jump to conclusions so well, Plenty of people were saying it at the time. ..a result of this kind. Um, it, it, firstly, we've not conceded Fowler, and, and let's see how that again, plays out. Um, uh, uh, whatever plays out, we will look into that result in detail, learn the lessons that we can from it. But, but let me say that... Pretty clear lessons. I mean, the, the, had... the, the voters in Fowler made it pretty clear what they thought. 
Well, uh, again, we'll, we'll work through all that. And, and let me, Dailay has clearly run a very strong campaign. But I'd also like to say that Christina Keneally has been a fighter on behalf of the people of New South Wales for the entirety of her political career. Um, she has been an enormous asset for us in the federal parliament. Um, and, and again, fighting for her state and her community. Um, you know, she was very excited about representing uh, the people of Fowler, given the opportunity. Um, we've not conceded it, and and, in, and whatever plays out there, we will work through the lessons of it. But will, will um, she be you know, found Christina another spot Keneally in Parliament? Has been a great or? servant of Labor. Is that it for Christina oh, Keneally? It, in Parliament? It, 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 is, it is way too early to, to, to walk down any of those paths. Christina has been a, a wonderful servant of the Labor Party. Um, we will continue to uh, scrutineer that the, the result in, in Fowler. You know, we, we remain, we have our fingers crossed, but uh, we'll see how that plays out. What about your home state, Victoria? The swing against Labor was nearly 4% on the primary vote in Victoria. Nationally, it's, it's a lot less than that. What do you put that down to? Well, I know you've been speaking a lot about the, the, the primary vote and, um, again, we will unpack what is a very complicated election and, and make sure, as professionals, that we learn everything that there is to learn from it. Um, there, there, there clearly has been a lot of independents running who have received strong support, and that speaks to uh, a, a splintering of the primary vote across the board. Um, I, I would point out that the two-party preferred vote uh, across the nation is, mm. is strong. And indeed, our result in Victoria, in terms of a two-party preferred result, um, is strong. Yeah, but that primary uh, vote, I mean, do you think at all this has to do with Victoria's lockdowns and any lingering uh, you know, sentiment over that? Uh, I, I think there, it, we, do, we do need to look at this in, in a lot of detail. I do think the circumstances of the pandemic, and they have particularly played out in Victoria, as you're obviously aware, um, has, had a, has had a big impact on, on the community and the way uh, people think. And, and I think it, it is important that, that, that we, we understand all, all of that. So that might explain a bit of the result. Uh, well, it, it, well, well it, it, it may, David, but, but I'm hesitating in answering the question because it, it, what, what, in my experience, um, you learn a lot from elections when you actually have the time and the space to work through all the details. What, what seems to be the case the morning after might not necessarily be the case going forward. I understand the observation that you're making and, and, and I, I, it's fair enough. I, you know, there has been an extraordinary period in Victoria uh, and we've seen a whole lot of uh, you know, protests last year and, and there, there is feedback that you hear in relation to all this. But I think we do need to take the time to, to properly understand this result and, and that's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, having said that, can I, can I just make this point though? Um, you know, we, we are seeing in a two-party preferred sense a strong vote to Labor in Victoria and around the mm. country. And we have really seen um, a repudiation of Scott Morrison's Liberals. I mean, um, the Liberal Party of, of, of Menzies, of Andrew Peacock, of, of Petro Giorgio, um, that, that a whole lot of people would have identified with in a place like Kuyong, um, has gone. And what we now have is, is a hardline Conservative Party, which has been led by Scott Morrison. And I think as a result of that, you have seen people uh, who would have traditionally identified with that, that moderate Liberal base uh, leaving the Liberal Party. Just and it quickly, is a seismic shift. Yeah, just quickly on that couple of things, with these new independents that are going to be there uh, in Parliament, as well as the additional Greens in the Parliament as well, is Labor willing to shift when it comes to climate change or are you going to stick with exactly what you took to the election? Uh, we we uh, put in place a very detailed policy at the end of last year, as, as detailed as any opposition has ever done, um, particularly in respect of uh, climate change and, and energy policy. Um, that's what we sought a mandate for um, and that's what we will take to the Parliament. Okay, and for your part, Conservatives targeted you through the campaign um, uh, over you know, conversations and meetings and speeches and so on when it comes to China. Do you want now to use the opportunity of a change in government to reset or repair relations with China? Oh, well, first, you know, I think it was a, um, a desperate campaign on the part of, of, of the government, which was really about distracting from their failings, particularly in managing our relationships in the region with, with the Pacific and Solomon Islands. Um, I think it's really important that 
um, we are getting uh, our, our questions right around our regional relationships in the Pacific, as I've said, around the hard power equation, meaning uh, our procurements, in, in particularly in terms of submarines. It's fundamentally important in terms of building Australia's strategic space. I think China is going to continue to be a challenge. It's a point that Anthony has made, and, and it's a point that he's made that um, he is, even... Is, is this a chance uh, for a no, reason? No matter who is elected... Chance? Well, I, I, th I think China remains a, a significant challenge um, and, and we will seek to engage in, in the world in, in a professional and a, and a thoughtful way. Um, we're obviously believers in diplomacy, uh, but China under President Xi um, has uh, sought to shape the world around it in a way that we've never seen before and that does present challenges for the nation um, and we need to make sure that we meet those challenges and we do that by making sure that we are getting um, our relationships right in the region, that we pay the Pacific the attention that it deserves, which this government, this coalition government plainly failed to do, and that we get the hard power equation right. I mean, the failure in respect of the management of submarines is, is just about the biggest uh, procurement failure in defence that we have seen in our country's history. Um, it has left us dangerously exposed in terms of the capability gap for the, the next generation of submarine, and, and all of that must be addressed. Well, we await to see who will be the defence minister overseeing uh, all of that you've just discussed with us. Richard Miles, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dave.